Again, we'll see that Paul, he wrote and he said therein, my key verse for today, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. He said, God did do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now, what could the law not do? You see, the law, it could point out the transgressions of mankind. But the thing that the law could not do is justify us of our sins because we were unable to fulfill. We were unable to keep the law itself. So Paul said that the Lord, the father gave his only begotten son to justify us, to justify us of our transgressions, Mm -hmm. our trespasses against the Lord. And so uh, I feel I I must ask you today, do you understand the measure of love that the Lord showed us by offering up his only begotten son. The Lord, he offered up his only begotten son as not just your sacrifice, but a sacrifice for all people. Do you understand the measure of God's love? the love that it would take to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel that many of us, we fail to understand the love that we have received from the Lord. You see, many of us, we cannot fathom. We cannot understand why it is that God loves us. Nonetheless, can we try to understand the depth of love that the Lord has for us? Mm -hmm. Again, I say to you this week that God is love. And in his love, there are no half steps. Do you understand what I mean by that? In his love, there are no half measures. Do you understand what I mean by that? As we have seen in recent weeks, God is always with us. He has never forsaken us, has he? The Lord, we know he suffers long with us. Mm -hmm. He pits up with our mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He bears with us in in all of our disobedience. Mm -hmm. Even when we don't deserve it and believe you and me, we do not deserve the love of God because our mess is plenty. God, he gives us his all. All And frankly, we could not ask for better. But guess what we do? We ask for better. Here we are today where some of us, we completely disregard the love that the Lord has shown for us. You see, the problem that we have is that many of us, we fail to understand the effort that God has put in to loving us. Mm -hmm. We fail to understand the effort that God has put in to blessing us, Mm -hmm. to make sure that we are content, to make sure that we are happy in our souls. You see, a lot of us, we are like children that have been heavily spoiled by our parents, but we seem to fail to realize all that our parents did in order for us to be happy, in order to spoil us, in order to make sure that we had everything that we could want. Mm -hmm. Are you a spoiled child today? So because we fail to understand the Lord's efforts, we fail to understand the full measure. We fail to understand the depth of love that the Lord has shown us. Mm -hmm. On a day that should be celebrated, by all with shouts of Hosanna. Mm -hmm. I feel that we need to fully see the measure of God's love in order for us to be able to fully appreciate the love that we have received from him. From my key verse, Paul, he spoke about how God sent his only begotten son as a sacrifice in the flesh for our sins. Mm -hmm. 
When we say that Jesus is our sacrifice, when we say that he is our offering that is sent to us by the Lord, I want you to understand today that he's not just any old kind of offering that God gave to us. You see, the Lord, he sent to us an offering to be our propitiation. There that word is again that came from our Sunday school lesson. To the church in Rome, Paul, he wrote that the father set forth Christ as our propitiation by his blood to pass over sin so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in his son, Jesus Christ. I want you to understand today that Jesus, he is both our Passover offering and he is our propitiation. He is our atonement offering as well. All right. All right. You see, the blood of Jesus, it covers the doorpost of our soul. Mm-hmm. And his blood, it marks us as belonging to him. Yes, yes. Yes. And because we belong to him, we are under his watch. And when I say to you today that we are under his watch, I want you to understand that I'm saying that we are under his protective care. Can't nothing harm us. Can't nothing get to us. Not even the Lord's wrath can get to us. Jesus's blood has been sprinkled throughout the most holy place and his altars for us. In, in order to make atonement for our sins. Yeah, yeah. At the very same time, and I think my uncle, he will love this. Jesus has also become our scapegoat. I told you he would love it. And as our scapegoat, he has become sin. He has taken on all of our sins. The sins that we committed yesterday, the sins that we commit Today and the sins that we will commit tomorrow, Jesus took it all on for you and for me. So I ask, what kind of love would sacrifice his own son for all of us undeserving sinners? Understand, the measure of God's love is too great to be measured. When I say to you that God's love for us cannot be measured, I tell you that this is the case because the Lord has given us his all in all. All Do you know what that means today? That the Lord has given you his all in all. If you knew what it meant, Mm -hmm. you would be appreciating what God did for us on the day in which we celebrate today. And bodies would be shouting out and filling in churches today with great joy for what the Lord did for us by sending his own son to become our Passover offering and our atonement offering as well. So if you don't understand the, the depth of God's love, let's try to take a look at the depth of God's love today. In order for us to understand the great depth of God's love, I want to attempt for a moment here today to put us in his shoes. In order for me to do this, we're going to take a look at the 22nd chapter of Genesis. And here in the 22nd chapter of Genesis, we're going to be taking a look at Abraham one who is called the patriarch of faith. We'll see Abraham here in the first verse where after Isaac had been born, we'll see that he is going to be tested by the Lord. That's what we'll see there in the first verse. Now, this is very interesting. And I feel I must make something very clear about this test from God. Because we know from his letter that James wrote that God does not tempt. He does not tempt anyone. He does not test. He does not provoke anyone. 
is what James says. So we'll see here in Genesis where it is very clear that the scripture states that God was testing Abraham. So someone may wonder, someone may ask, well, did James not know what he was talking about? Does what James say conflict with what scripture says in the book of Genesis? Now, to be clear here, what James was speaking about in his letter was about the notion that God will tempt us to do wrong, that the Lord will tempt us, in other words, to sin. And on that notion, God will not tempt you to sin. He will not tempt you to disobey him. He will not tempt you to do what is unrighteous because he himself cannot be tempted to do evil. In other words, the Lord our God, he cannot sin. The only thing that our Lord knows how to do is to be faithful. The only thing that our Lord knows how to do is to be righteous because that is what he is. God is holy. God is love. God is righteous. There is no sin that is in him. So with that in mind, God's test for Abraham was a test to gauge Abraham's faithfulness. There are a lot of things that we go through today that test our faithfulness to see if we're going to lean on, to depend on and trust in the Lord. And so we'll see again that the Lord is testing Abraham's faithfulness and we'll see that he gauges Abraham's faithfulness. We're told here in the second verse by calling for Abraham to take his only son and offer him up as a burnt offering to him. God called for Abraham to take his only son, to take Isaac and offer him up, sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Now, I hope that the parallel that I'm about to try to draw for you today, I hope that it is not lost on you. Abraham taking his only son. Now I know that we have some smart ones out there that will say, Oh, well, Isaac wasn't his only son. I know. I know. Of course, Abraham, he had another son before Isaac. He had Ishmael and he had Ishmael with Hagar, who Sarah had gave to Abraham because Sarah believed that she was barren, right. that she could not have children. Yeah, yeah. Ishmael, however, was not the son of promise. Right. You see, the Lord had promised that Abraham and that Sarah would have a child. Mm -hmm. The Lord promised that Isaac would be their child. Mm -hmm. So by that point in time, I want you to understand that Sarah, she had grown a bit upset and jealous of Ishmael. All right. and by that point in time, Abraham had gotten rid of Ishmael and, and, and Hagar. They were made to leave. So at that point, we could say that Isaac really was Abraham's only child. You see, there are a couple of ways that we could say that. He was the only child that Abraham and Sarah had. And he was certainly the only child that was living under Abraham's care at that point in time. So I want you to understand that with that in mind, Abraham's love for Isaac, it truly was great. And God here was calling on Abraham to offer up his only son as a burnt offering. Now, I don't know if you all remember this, but we had a Sunday school lesson in the fall quarter to where we was looking at offerings. And we spoke about what a burnt offering stood as a sign of. A burnt offering stood as a sign of one being committed to the Lord. It stood as a sign of one's faithfulness to God. Right. 
So the fact that the Lord was again calling for Abraham to offer up Isaac as a burnt offering, it reiterates the fact that God was gauging Abraham's commitment to him. It reiterates the fact that the Lord was gauging Abraham's faithfulness to him. So I would ask all of you today that if God called on you to offer up your child, your only child or your children or another loved one mm -hmm. to gauge your faithfulness, would you be able to do it? Would you offer up a loved one mm -hmm. as a sign of being committed, as a sign of being faithful to the Lord? Now, when we look here at Abraham and we look here at the love that Abraham had for Isaac, mm -hmm. I want you to remember again the great difficulty that Abraham and Sarah went through in order to have him mm -hmm. so that we can understand here the depth of love that Abraham had for Isaac here. See, after years of, of trying to have a son, they couldn't. After years of praying to have a son, they was going without. It had gotten to a point that they had both Abraham and Sarah had given up hope All right. All right. on ever being able to have one child, let alone having children. It had got so bad for them that when God said that they would have a child, that both Abraham and the Sarah scripture records laughed at the idea. That's right. That's right. They laughed at the notion yeah. when God said that you were going to have a child, Abraham fell on his face laughing, asking, how would it be possible? Yeah. I'm a hundred years old and Sarah, she ain't no younger. <laughs> she 90. How are we going to have children, Lord? So just imagine when this 100 year old and this 90 year old have a child. Imagine how they must have felt when, when Sarah conceived the child. Imagine what they must have felt when, when Sarah gave birth to the child. I can imagine that they was happy. Not just any kind of happiness. They was joyful. I imagine that they greatly rejoiced those nine months and then they exploded with joy when she gave birth to Isaac. Now, while you are imagining that great joy that they must have felt, imagine how the air must have been sucked out of Abraham when God said, hey, offer up your own son as a burnt offering to me. Imagine the air sinking out of you had God asked for you to offer up your firstborn just after you had done had him or her. So before some of us rush off and say, hey, yeah, I'll give up my loved one to show that I'm committed to the Lord. Let us understand the great depth of what we will be giving up. That is what Abraham was being asked to give up. You see, the fact of the matter is that many of us, we are slow to offer up just a couple of hours on one Sunday to the Lord. The fact of the matter is that many of us are slow to offer up a couple of minutes just to pray to God at least one time a day, not multiple times. The truth is that many of us, we spend little time actually being diligent in walking in our faith in the Lord. You see, a lot of us struggle with sacrificing our way for the way of God, for putting him first in our lives. So if we cannot show that we are committed to the Lord in these matters, how could we dare think for one second that we would give up a loved one to show that we are committed to the Lord? Now, again, here in the 22nd chapter of Genesis, when we take a look there at the third verse, we are told that Abraham, he moved the very next morning to offer up his only son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next morning, Abraham moved and he was moving out of faith. Now, because we can sympathize with the depth of what Abraham was being called to do, 
I believe that you would agree with me when I suggest to you that even though he was moving, it must not have been easy for him to move. Even though he was moving, it must have been a struggle for Abraham to move. Yes, he was moving in faith, but it was a great struggle for him to be moving to offer up his own son. You see, I believe all of us, we have moments and times where we are moving in faith, but it can be a struggle for us to move in faith. It ain't so easy for us. We're moving, but it's a slow trudge for us to move in that faith. So I say that offering up Isaac wasn't easy for Abraham to do because on the three day journey that we see there in scripture, we don't see that there was much talking that was taking place. There wasn't much talking that's recorded there in scripture. So the feeling, it must have been a, a somber feeling, a somber tone on this journey to the place where Abraham was to offer up Isaac. Even when he took Isaac with him to the place where he would make his offering, we'll see there in the seventh verse that it wasn't Abraham that started up the conversation. We'll see that it was Isaac that began the conversation. All right. When Isaac could see the spot for the offering, he noticed and he did said to Abraham, we'll see there in the a verse that there was no lamb for the burnt offering. Mm-hmm. And then again, we'll see there in eight verse that Abraham, he summarily responded to his son who was paying close attention He said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. See, this was a a comforting sentiment that Abraham was making, Mm -hmm. knowing full well what he was being called to do. Mm -hmm. You see, Abraham, he did not want to alarm his son about what was to take place there. Mm -hmm. So when Abraham brought Isaac to the place to offer him up, We see him there in the ninth verse where he is still moving. But I believe, and I suggest to you today, that he's moving somberly there. Mm -hmm. As he began to build the altar and as he tied Isaac up and as he then laid Isaac on top of the altar. Again, just imagine what must have been going through his mind. Put yourself in his place and imagine what would be going through your mind if it was you? All right. All right. There was nothing easy about what he was doing, mm-hmm. but again, he was committed to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see there from the 10th through the 13th verse there that as he began to draw back mm-hmm. his knife there mm-hmm. to slay his son, All right. and as he, I imagine, began to raise it over his head, and began to bring it down, we're told that that God called out to Abraham. We're told that that God interceded there with a ram caught in the thicket. Abraham was committed Mm -hmm. in a task that I want you to see, and I hope that you understand today, it was very difficult. It was a struggle, Mm -hmm. but Abraham, he loved the Lord and he was putting God first in his life. But again, it was hard. It was tough. Mm -hmm. It was difficult. I say to you again that I hope the parallel that I'm trying to draw for you today, I hope that it has not been lost on you with Abraham being called to offer up his own son. See, there's something that we celebrate on this day. It's Palm Sunday, isn't it? And I hope that you will realize what it is that we celebrate. What is it that we celebrate on this day? We are celebrating that God sent his only begotten son for who? For us, he sent his own son, his only begotten son for you. 
Not only did he send his only begotten son for you, he sent his only begotten son for the rest of the world as well. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating that God sent his only begotten son to be our offering, mm -hmm. our sacrifice. That is what we celebrate today. Jesus, I want you to understand, is the Lord saying that he is fully committed to you. He is our burnt offer. No, he didn't burn on the altar. He didn't burn on the cross, but he certainly died on that cross as God loved the world. Jesus is a sign of God's commitment to us. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying today. You see, earlier in this series of sermons, when I preached that God loves you, mm -hmm. I said something that I would hope would stick with you. Mm -hmm. What I said in that sermon is that the love God has for you, it runs deep. Right. Do you remember me saying that? Now, let's first consider this. Mm -hmm. Has God called on you to offer up a loved one? as a sign of you being committed to him. Nope. God doesn't call for you to do that. Has God called on you to offer up your own blood as a sacrifice for yourself or for your loved ones that will wipe out all of your sins? Nope. Absolutely not. God hasn't called on us to sacrifice ourselves for anybody, has he? You see, God has not called on us or anybody else to burn on an altar as a sign of our faithfulness to him. I want you to hear this clearly today. God has not called on us to literally give our blood for nobody. You see, the Lord has only called on us to be faithful in his only begotten son. That's the only thing that God has called on you to do yeah. is to have faith in the one that he sent to die for your sins. Will you believe in him today? Now, to understand the measure of God's love, let's tie up the parallel here. Let's bring it home here today. Let's tie God. Let's put God into the place of Abraham, who was offering up his own son, who was offering up Isaac. Now, when we think of God, as we have thought of Abraham here today, I think we can better sympathize with the Lord giving up his only begotten son. What I mean by that is that I believe that for a long time that we have thought very lightly of the father giving up his only begotten son. But in scripture, we are told repeatedly that the, the father loved the son. Think about it. We can recall where in scripture, the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I want you to understand today that when the father said that, that he wasn't saying that lightly. He wasn't saying that just to say it for the sake of saying it. When the father said that, he meant it. You see, I feel that we often believe that it was easy for the father to give up his only begotten son today. But now that we can tie Abraham to the father giving up his only begotten son, I would suggest to you today that maybe it wasn't so easy for the father to give up his only begotten son for us sinners, for us undeserving sinners. You see, I don't believe it was easy for the father to watch his son enter into Jerusalem for that last time. You see, I, I want you to understand today that I don't think that it was easy for the father to listen to his son pray for him to take the cup away from him before he entered into Jerusalem to give himself up for us undeserving sinners. You see, I, I don't believe that it was easy for the father to watch his son hang on a cross 
for us undeserving and wicked sinners whose nature is a nature of sin. See, I don't believe that it was easy for the father to watch his only begotten son be nailed to the cross. And as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today, I don't believe that it was easy for the father to, to watch as his son was mocked, mm -hmm. laughed at right. by the people mm -hmm. and by those who were considering themselves as leaders, as religious leaders of the people. I do not believe that it was easy for the father to stand by. Mm -hmm. Could you stand by? and watch your loved one die for the rest of the world. The world that will be ungrateful for that offering, for that sacrifice. That still to this day mock the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You see, at the point where the Lord stopped Abraham from sacrificing Isaac, the father did not take his son off the altar. The father did not take his son off the cross. No matter how much the people scoffed and mocked at Jesus while he hung there on the cross, guess what the father did? He allowed him to remain on the cross. He didn't take him off the cross. Even when Jesus cried out that the father had forsaken him, guess what the father did? Jesus was still hanging there on the cross. He didn't take him off the cross. When Jesus was becoming the thing that the Lord despises, when Jesus was becoming sin, the father didn't take Jesus off of the cross, did he? You see, the father did not stop that offering that was for all of us. Can you imagine again just how hard all of this may have been for the father today? Right. If it was you right. watching your loved one, I imagine that it would hurt. Wow. And there the father is right. watching his loved one, his only begotten son in whom he was well pleased yeah, yeah. hanging there on the cross hmm. in humiliation. Yeah, yeah. for all of us. I don't, I just feel like we don't understand what that means for us today. I feel like we don't get what the father, what God did for us by giving us his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that we, we get it today. Yeah, yeah. So why would the father do this? What measure of love does the father have for the world? that will lead to him sacrificing his son for our sins. I tell you today that it is the measure of love that sees us, even though we are nothing but sinners. It is the measure of love that sees us as his children. God to us is that loving parent that moves everything to make sure that we are cared for, that we are happy, yeah. and that we are content in our souls. Mm -hmm. You see, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Lord loves you with the love of a loving parent. Mm -hmm. Yes, when we do wrong, he's going to get on us. But at the same time, when we do wrong and the devil comes by laughing and mocking, saying, he, 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 look at what I got her to do. He, he, look at, look at Andrew. He done fell down the sin. God says to him, I ain't going to put up with it. I ain't got time for the mess that you going on about. I'm going to lift Andrew up. I'm going to lift Deanna up from their sins. Yeah. You see, God said to the devil, enough is enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he sent his only begotten son yeah. for us. Wow. You see, God gave and he still gives us his all in all today. Yeah. Because again, the Lord with the love of a loving parent, he is fully committed to us. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I say to you today that God is fully committed to you. Mm -hmm. 
That is the measure of love that the Lord has for us today. He is committed to us, his children. To the Romans, Paul wrote, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. Paul went on to say, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That's what I pray. The Lord is my father. Is he your father today? I certainly hope so. In his gospel, John wrote that as many as received him, the only begotten son of God, to them he gave the right to become children of God. We are God's children today. And that is why he loves us. That is why the love of God runs deep for us today, because we belong to him. Again, do you understand that we, all of us who are of genuine faith, we were once the lost children of God. Think about that. We were once the lost children of God. Again, Jesus said that he was sent not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Not for some, but a ransom a price had to be paid for many. So God allowed the sacrifice of his only begotten son to pay that ransom price in order to be able to get us back from this old world in order to get us back from sin as well. Again, Paul wrote that, since we have become the children of God, we'll see it there in the 17th verse of the eighth chapter of Romans, where Paul said that we are also heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Christ, where we will be glorified with him. You and I are going to be glorified with Christ one day. So, Take the depth of the father's love for his only begotten son that I again can be seen, believe can be seen through Abraham and Isaac. Take that love and add it to you because that's the depth of love that the father has for you today. That is the measure of love that the Lord has for all of those who genuinely believe in him today. Again, I say to you today that the measure of God's love for us, it is so great that he gave his only begotten son, the one who was without sin, the one who was truly innocent. He gave him who was pure for all of us who was corrupt, for all of us who are defiled by sin. I tell you today that it was hard for the Lord to give up his only begotten son, but the measure of love that he has for us, that it must have been great. It must have been a deep love that, that God had for us to give up something special in his only begotten. I don't know if you hear me today. Because Jesus was special, I tell you today, that means that you are special. In God's eyes, you are a treasure in God's eyes. That's why he sacrificed his own for you today. Don't take God's love for granted. It's time for us to stop doing that today. We take for granted Palm Sunday today. You see, the reason why I love Palm Sunday is because God sent his son for me. And I, like you, I ain't nothing but a sinner. 
I ain't perfect and I don't pretend to be perfect. So I say, oh, that preacher got a bad attitude about himself. Yeah, I do. I guess I got a bad attitude about myself. And they'll say, oh, he got a sarcastic mouth about himself. Yeah, I guess I do. That's my fault. I have plenty of faults. But I stand in the name of Jesus today. I stand in the name of the one that the Father sent for me today. And I'm happy about that today. My boast is Jesus Christ because he suffered for me. He died for me so that I can have not an earthly home. I don't want an earthly home. I want a home that is eternal. And God sent his only begotten son for me. And I tell you today that I am thankful for it. I'm thankful that Christ did not come off the cross when the people were mocking him. When the religious leaders stood by and they mocked at him as well. When they were standing by and gloating. I'm happy that Jesus was able to go down to hell and proclaim victory in hell today. And I'm happy today to proclaim victory on Christ's behalf. I have eternal life and you can have eternal life too because the Lord loves you with great love to be able to suffer with your mess, to put up with your mess, to bear with you in all of your disobedience, just as he has done with me. Again, the Lord did this because he made an everlasting covenant with us and himself to save us. The Lord gave his only begotten son in order to fulfill the great desire that he has to dwell with all of us, his children, not in this world because this world is sin, but in heaven, his home. So I tell you today that in this grand desire, the Lord, he went all out for us and we shouldn't be like a spoiled child that don't realize that God went out went all out for us. Let us stop being spoiled today. I tell you today that we should appreciate the immeasurable depth of love that the Lord has for us. We should appreciate all of the efforts that the Lord has done for us in order to satisfy our every need, in order to make sure that we are blessed, that we are happy, and that we are content in our soul. Let us again praise the Lord today and let us again give thanks to God today for giving us his only begotten son. Amen. 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 Amen.